Chow! Hi there, it's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. And uh, we're here in my deep dark dungeon of a basement where I do all my video editing. I used to have my set down here. Uh, but we're gonna we're talking Ryzen Threadripper memory today. It's gonna be fun. There's all kinds of things here to consider, and uh, I just got holy jeez. A uh, bunch of RAM sent to me, like look at that, all 8 DIMM slots filled up of, with Ballistics Elite 3200 speed memory. I had uh, Ballistics be kind enough to send me this stuff, I cannot believe uh, we're going to check this out for review, really we're just going to have a hell of a lot of RAM in a Ryzen system and I'm going to give you, you know, some pointers and some tips on some RAM, it's going to be fun. So when I first started. I had uh, this Giel memory kit. This is not their Ryzen branded stuff, okay? And I was weary, because when I received it, it didn't have Threadripper yet, and I was trying this RAM in uh, Ryzen 1700. It would not post past 2666. It's obviously not the Samsung B die RAM. So uh, when I popped it in here, I was kind of worried. Fire an XMP profile, Bob's your uncle, 3200 speed, uh, and that really does help with the uh, instructions per clock on Threadripper it, and, and how everything meshes together to have higher speed memory. So I was pretty psyched to be using this and it was working very, very well. In fact, I might, I don't know, it's not, it's glowy, it's really tall. I might switch back to it eventually. I'm not sure what's going on, but because uh, it worked very, very well out of the box. Now, I received this huge kit of RAM and my first instinct is like, let's just fire it on the computer, right? Hold up, number one, reset your BIOS, or at least reset your um, memory profile to what the default to auto, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna get a lot of beeps and squeaks unless the timings on the memory are exactly the same as the memory you were taking out and replacing. So uh, that, that's a tip right there. Reset your BIOS, probably just reset your BIOS and start from scratch, that's probably a good place to start. Number two, putting Eight sticks of memory into a Threadripper uh, motherboard might not be the best idea at first. You might want to do a couple things first, okay? You might want to check how well the RAM works with just four sticks in quad channel because that worked very, very well with the Giel memory kit and uh, f of course I fire all eight of those in there right away and uh, I get really long post uh, time. It does eventually post goes into Windows, it's not recognizing any speeds or anything, so when I go back into the BIOS, it had reset the BIOS itself, because I had maintained my overclock, but I did set the uh, the memory profile to auto, and that's where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and set the XMP profile, and just see if we can, you know, save with all eight in there and see what happens. Because what's probably going to happen, what should happen, because it's happened every other time with me, is the computer just takes a very long time to post and eventually it will post and when you go into the BIOS it says it has reset the BIOS and everything is back to normal. If you go into Windows you'll notice that your clock speed on your overclock everything's just you know blanked out and you're running at completely stock speeds 2133 on your memory. So you see it's taking a very very long time to post. This had me worried because of course this is what I did First thing, fired all the dims in there, it's not working right, what the hell is going on? But, in my infinite wisdom, see there's the post, we're going to run in here, see? BIOS has been reset, boo hoo. In my infinite wisdom, I thought to myself, why don't I try just four dims, or maybe even two, try, try dual channel if I have to. But taking four of them out, four dims out, starter up. So, uh, and then uh, I also tried messing with timings and stuff like that, uh, changing the voltage myself, upping the voltage. And truthfully, I did get the system to boot at 2933 without taking any memory out first, okay? So you might jump to that conclusion first. No, get four dims working first. So we're going to set our XMP profile. It's as simple as this. Save and exit. Don't worry about any CPU overclocking right now. This should post instantly. Usually the fans ramp up real fast, they slow down, and you'll hear your post beep. Boom. 
that our frequency for our RAM, well, it ran away, is 3200. So it's working. Now I can vouch that once we go into Windows, it'll, it'll work. Now at this point, you might even want to set an overclock on your CPU. Uh, I have this amazing Intermax. Don't, I, they didn't pay me off, I promised. Uh, AIO in here. So my computer is awesome. And we're just going to go to 41. Boom. 4.1 4 gigahertz. Boom. That's where I found this is the sweet spot right now. Uh, because uh, because it's, the Intermax is working so hard. It's loud. Any higher than this, it'll. And, and actually, the, I'm having trouble getting past there with the 64 gigs of RAM in there. But 4.1 is the sweet spot, at least for 64 gigs of RAM. So now we're going to. All we got to do here, at least, I'm, you know, for my chip, is set this to 1.41. You're supposed to be able to go to 1.425 with Ryzen. I'm following Ryzen, and 1.2. Zero five, boom. There we go. So you see these values here. Now what I also do is uh, because I'm a crazy person, I'll go and set my LLC, my load line calibration, to medium instead of auto. Because why the hell not? Because what that does is if there's a lack in voltage, it's pushing voltages up. Uh, it does that automatically anyways, so you might as well have it set to medium. I think that what that actually is doing is putting a ceiling on how high the volts will go. I don't want to set it to high or extreme. I think my idea is that medium kind of puts a ceiling at like 1.48 volts, that it'll never go above that, uh, because I've been seeing some crazy voltages with Threadripper, uh, all on its own, okay? And make sure your BIOS is up to date, because uh, I've definitely noticed as more BIOS updates come out, things get more polished. So that's all we're gonna need to do. Save and exit. We're gonna boot into Windows. I'm gonna shut the system off and we will put the other RAM sticks in and see just what the hell happens, okay? All right, we can see there our memory is at 3200 if you times that number by two and we can go over and see our overclock is working technically we're at 40 point or 40 90 megahertz i don't know why it's having to do with something 4.1 gigahertz okay so now we can shut the system off plug all the ram sticks in and this overclock on the memory and on the cpu should remain okay so stay tuned All right, we see here that the memory is at 1596 times 2, 3200, with 64 gigs active. And our overclock is at 4090-4100 megahertz. So it works, it works. 64 gigs of RAM all smashed in there working with an overclock. And I can verify that it has been as stable as any other you know configuration with a 32 gig at least edit i edited a video yesterday like this no problem took me a while to get this figured out though and i hope this helps you guys out there if you're trying to run huge amounts of memory and maybe an x299 intel i don't know how that works maybe it's just perfect works like that or x399 maybe an asus motherboard wouldn't have this problem maybe another memory manufacturer wouldn't have this problem i don't know if it's just got to make sure there's some setting it sets on a first you know ram test uh, and then it saves it and doesn't do that test the next time you boot and that's why i'm able to put more dims in there and then it works i i don't know but it's it's working now it seems to be pretty stable and you might have to you know do this weird step and then keep in mind that if you want to overclock from here past 4.1 gigahertz which i know that sounds crazy uh I, when, when i go to my next level that i can achieve with 32 uh gigs of ram uh, I hit a ceiling and then I have to start this whole process over again. So is it really worth it to have 64 gigs of RAM, all eight DIMM slots filled up? Well, I mean, it sure does look 
damn cool in there, isn't it? I mean, it's not RGB or anything, but I like, I actually really like the look of it, the black. I mean, it's no tallest memory in the world here. I know I'm grabbing the, the contacts, you're probably getting mad. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna keep play, plugging away at this and see if it's stable, see if it's worth it. But I can't find a reason. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any faster with double the RAM in it at this point. 32 gigs of RAM is a lot, especially when everything is running so damn fast. And I think it would probably be worth it to have the stability and less RAM over more RAM and uncertainty. So I'm Matt watching me join Instagram and Twitter. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I know this is like a one percenter of one percenter of one percenter problem when it comes to computers, but hell, you're with my journey. You're coming along with me. And I'm going to have some more budget friendly stuff in the next couple of days. I have the, uh, I know it doesn't make sense, but I have a half on APU coming to test that out. Uh, try and find a reason to, to use that in today's modern era. Uh, I got some other video cards and stuff coming up too. So that'll be sure pretty fun as well as who knows what you might pop up on the channel, wearable cameras, earphones, tech tech and things and stuff keyboards but uh, i'll see you guys in another video thanks very much for watching me blather in my basement about way too much memory way too many more money more problems <laughs>